السلام علیکم ویوس ویلکم ٹو سیاست انگلش نیوز آئی ایم ایمن عمر دا حیدرآباد ایم پی اینڈ آل انڈیا مجلس اتحاد المسلم ان چیف اسد الدین اویسی آن ویڈنس ڈے کال اپان پیپل ٹو کنڈکٹ پریئرس ایٹ دیئر ہومس ڈیو ٹو لاک ڈاؤن ٹو بی امپوز ان تلنگانہ اسٹیٹ دا ایم پی ان ٹویٹر سیٹ دیٹ ان لائٹ آف دا لاک ڈاؤن آئی اپیل ٹو دا مسلم کمیونٹی ٹو آفر پریئرس ایٹ دیئر ہومس فار دا ہولی رمضان فیسٹیول ہی آلسو سجیسٹیڈ اسٹرکٹ ایڈہرنس ٹو دا کووڈ نائنٹین پروٹوکالس ڈیورنگ دا فیسٹیول According to information, the festival is to be observed either on 13th of May or 14th, only after sighting of the moon. It may be said here that OAC has urged the state government to avoid taking any further decision to extend the lockdown further. The lockdown began on Tuesday and will continue for 10 days in the state to curb corona cases. He appealed to Chief Minister K. Chandra Shekhar Rao and IT and Municipal Minister K. T. Rama Rao to not extend the lockdown too in the state. His opposition to the lockdown was that it will deprive the poor and workers of their work and livelihood. Roads wore a deserted look in Hyderabad and the rest of Telangana on Wednesday morning as the 10-day lockdown began across the state to check the spread of COVID-19. The busy markets in Hyderabad are under zero mobility as all the shops and businesses establishments down shutters at 10 a.m. in the morning. People were seen rushing back homes after availing the 4-hour relaxation from 6 a.m. to buy the essentials. Police personnel were patrolling the streets to enforce the lockdown. Wednesday being the first day of the lockdown, police were not strict in enforcing restrictions in the initial hours. This was done to give some time to people to return home. However, from Thursday, police planned to take strict action against those found on roads after 10 a.m. Hyderabad Police Commissioner Anjani Kumar, who was supervising lockdown, Enforcement at historic Charminar said 180 check posts were set up in the city to check the movement of vehicles. Senior officials were deployed to ensure strict adherence to lockdown norms. A senior police official said cases would be booked against violators under Disaster Management Act and their vehicles would be seized. Cyberabad police has cracked the sensational Kukatpalli HDFC ATM robbery case. The Cyberabad Police Commissioner V.C. Sajanar said that they had cracked the case within a short span of time. He said that they had arrested two accused, Ajit Kumar and Mukesh Kumar, in the case. He said that the accused had shot the, at the security guards of the ATM and decamped with 5 lakh rupees cash. He said that the accused belonged to Bihar state and added that they had recovered 6.31 lakh rupees cash, two mobile phones, two wheelers and one weapon from the possession of the accused. He said that the two were also the accused in a similar theft incident that took place at JD Mitla. He said that the accused were indulging in such crimes after becoming addicted to liquor and financial problems. The director of the weather department has said that light to average rainfall with lightning is expected to occur at some places in Telangana. The director further added that winds up to a speed of 30 to 40 kilometers per hour are expected. Hail storms are expected in Adilabad, Mancherial, Nirmal, Nizamabad and Hyderabad regions. The National Students Union of India has filed a missing person report against Union Home Minister Amit Shah with the Delhi Police over the disappearance of the country's Home Minister at the time of the pandemic. NSUI General Secretary Nagesh Kariyappa filed the complaint against Amit Shah with the Parliament Street Police Station. Kariyappa said that politicians are supposed to serve the nation and not run away from a crisis situation. He said that when the country is suffering from a deadly pandemic and the citizens are facing a crisis, it is the duty of the politicians to be accountable, not only towards the government of India or the BJP, but also towards the people of the country. The Maharashtra Congress has demanded that the Bharatiya Janata Party-led government at the center must strongly condemn the Israeli attacks on the Al-Aqsa Mosque in Jerusalem at the fag end of the holy fasting month of Ramadan, killing scores of Muslims and injuring many here on Wednesday. A delegation led by ex-minister and working president Naseem Khan called on Governor Bhagat Singh Khoshiari and submitted a memorandum to this effect. The Indian government must condemn these atrocities perpetrated by the Israeli armed forces and send a clear message that India stands firmly behind the Palestinians, Khan said. The delegation comprising ex-MP Obedullah K. Azmi, former legislator Yusuf Abrahani, Raza Academy convener Saeed Nouri and others told the 
governor that Indian Muslims were stunned to see the indiscriminate firing by the Israeli soldiers on innocent children and women when they were praying at the Al-Aqsa Mosque, considered the third holiest site in Islam after Makkah and Medina. As part of Saudi Arabia's efforts to provide high-quality services to visitors and pilgrims of the Holy Mosque using the latest technologies, the world's largest cooling plant of its kind has been installed in Makkah's Grand Mosque to ensure that worshippers perform their rituals in the cool and fresh atmosphere inside Al-Haram. The General Presidency for the Affairs of the Two Holy Mosques works on ensuring fresh air inside the Grand Mosque using ultraviolet light air purification technology. The filtration process is carried out nine times a day before releasing the well-treated fresh air into the mosque, the Saudi Gazette reported. The air filtration process, which ensures 100% air purity, is carried out in three stages, namely, moving air into filters using fans, capturing pollutants and particles, and then pushing back clean air into space. Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan has told Russian President Vladimir Putin that the international community should give Israel a strong and deterrent lesson against its conduct towards the Palestinians. That's according to the Turkish Presidential Communications Directorate, which said the two leaders talked by phone on Wednesday about the escalating confrontation sparked by tension over contested Jerusalem. The statement said Erdogan stressed the need for the international community to give Israel a strong and deterrent lesson and pressed for the United Nations Security Council to rapidly intervene with determined and clear messages to Israel. The statement said Erdogan suggested to Putin that an international protection force to shield the Palestinians should be considered. That's it for today. Thank you viewers.